you ever feel like having that much power on your show has led to being a little unprofessional? And we're just supposed to be having a conversation, but like he's so tall and he's so handsome that in the middle of it, he was, he was just supposed to be like, what do you think, Mindy? And I was like, and that looked around, and I improvised just kissing him in the scene. You I just, just started I, kissing that guy, that, was, that picture, he, yeah. He just and they were like, hey man, what are you doing? You could be sued for that. And I got very scared, uh, and then I said, um, tell anyone and you're fired. The third and fourth episodes of Velma are trash. They're more of a dumpster fire than the previous episodes because the third episode focuses mostly on Velma discovering her sexuality while ripping off Cobra Kai to teach the viewers about how evil men are. And the fourth episode focuses on even more sexuality discovery while also teaching the viewers how evil men are. Only this time through the eyes of Fred, just like in the original show. Huh. By the way, if you haven't had the chance to check out my previous review on the first and second episodes of Velma, feel free to check it out. I'm going to leave the link in the description for you all to see. But Dread, what about the murder mystery? What? That's still going on? I'm sorry, I guess I was too busy having anti-male ideology shoved down my throat for 50 minutes straight to notice. You see, any plot that Mindy Kaling constructed, if it was constructed by a human at all and not a racist misogynist scripting bot, has been smothered into a coma by the endless swath of ulcer-inducing jokes that specifically target men, and more importantly, fans of Scooby-Doo. And even if the average sane TV watcher was able to keep up with the lightning-paced fiasco of this horribly animated farce, they wouldn't be able to figure out who the killer is anyway, since each and every character in this show performs extreme acts of violence and breaks every law imaginable in basically every scene such as Daphne stabbing people repeatedly and spreading blood all over the school gym, or Fred breaking out of prison via a riot and suffering no consequences. At this point, anyone could be the killer, and I wouldn't be the least bit surprised since all of them are obvious criminals with violent tendencies and motives. Even the police investigating the crimes aren't taking the murder plot seriously because the middle-aged white men, as Velma refers to them as, have concluded that the murderer is only killing hot teenage girls. But don't focus too much on the fact that middle-aged men are calling teenage girls hot. There's a mystery to solve. So we'll leave it to Norville to do all the investigating by utilizing a cardigan like a lasso of truth on suspects while Velma tries to get into Daphne's pants. The only real life experience I find watching this show is remotely equivalent to is sticking your hand in a toaster and absorbing 40,000 volts of electricity. But even that sounds infinitely more enticing than this terrifying acid trip of a series, except for the fact that acid trips are way more fun. I suppose this is the moment I say a prayer of thankfulness for HBO Max having enough sense not to include Scooby-Doo in this show, at least for now. But there's always the chance that Mindy will screw that up too, though. Don't give her any ideas, right, Mindy? <laughs> right? Um, tell anyone and you're fired. Like Scooby-Doo! Where are you? Sh 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 Shaggy, stop it. What if he shows up? Imagine what they'll do to your boy! But like, shh, sh sh hush, 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 it's okay. Here, have a Scooby snack. Just eat it, shh and soon you'll forget that this nightmare ever happened. Speaking of nightmares, this clear as day erotic dream that Mindy Kaling is having suits her way more than it suits us. In Velma, Mindy is living her lifelong fantasy, being hit on by every single member of the mystery gang. Seriously, she gets hit on and kissed by Daphne, hit on by Norville, who she rejects constantly, and even hit on by Fred by the end of the fourth episode because he read a book about feminism and realized how beautiful Velma was on the inside. Oh wait, there's still one big problem. They're all teenagers. That's right. Mindy Kaling is in her 40s, and yet she has self-inserted her personality into that of Velma and has written these stories as such so that she is the object of desire for all of these kids. Can't possibly be a red flag or anything. No, absolutely not. Pfft, no way. Of course I'm implying something, Play-Doh, but I'll never tell. Mindy has serious issues. Also, do you recall any parts of this show being scary, as Mindy Kaling claims? I've seen far scarier things in previous iterations of Scooby-Doo. Like my all-time favorite Scooby-Doo movie, Zombie Island. Remember that one? Oh, that was great. It actually kind of freaked me out when I was younger. It had all kinds of cool things in it. Zombies, werecats, and voodoo dolls that literally melted the mystery gang's faces in one scene. It was epic, man. And that's what's sad about this entire situation. There is an endless number of Scooby-Doo stories and themes that they could have used to make this show scary, effective, and well-told. 
But no, Mindy Kaling thinks that her terrible writing comes off as scary. Well, I mean, she is right about that, Plato. It is scary, just not in the way that she expected. Try not to pay attention to the fact that Velma is now the third worst rated show on IMDb and the worst animated show on IMDb ever. Jinkies! Even Dragon Ball Evolution, which was huh, so bad, can never equate to this miasma of stupidity. And what is HBO Max saying about it? Well, look at how many people are watching the most watched show ever. Yeah, well, maybe they do sound that dumb, Plato. They certainly act like it. They're clearly pretending that it's a success because of how much attention it's getting, and maybe that's all that matters to HBO Max. But these lies can only last so long. Look at the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. It's laughably hated by regular viewers, and there aren't enough cardigans in the world to convince me that the critics are being honest here. Who are they kidding? It was 8% previously, and now it's at 6%. Imagine if it gets to 0%. That will be absolutely insane, and I'll be laughing, by the way. Eventually, they're going to realize that they've made a mistake. Or perhaps they already realized it, since they're airing two episodes at a time. If I were them, I'd push out as many episodes per week as possible to get it out of the way, so that other quality shows can fill those time slots and save HBO Max from the eventual pitchfork fest that will ensue once this series reaches its conclusion. Oh, who am I kidding? There's nothing that's going to stop that from happening. Do they even care about this show, really? In all truth, it doesn't matter, because at this point, I don't think there's any way that the show can get better. Velma and her ridiculous counterparts are unlikable and bad-natured, and if Velma's mom ends up being the killer, which all signs point to, then who cares? If you're pushing away the entire fan base and the only people who are left to enjoy this trash heap are hateful, unsupportive, non-Scooby-Doo fans, then what was the purpose of all of this money and effort in the first place? To alienate people? To become the most despised person on the internet? I'll never understand the obsession with becoming famous no matter how you get there and no matter how many bridges you burn in the process, and yet that's the exact strategy I see at play here. Maybe that's the only way to get ahead in Hollywood these days, but it's only a matter of time until Mindy Kaling's career goes down the toilet. Someone give Velma a Scooby snack, pronto. That being said, I hope you enjoyed my review. Like and share this video, and if you'd like to keep up to date with future content, consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all again next time. Say goodbye, Play-Doh.